and we're live. All right. Hey everybody, three minutes late, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, my name is Joe Moore, I'm the CMO of Extreme Experience. I'm sitting here with Ted, our Chief Technician, and Cal, our uh, Track Operations Manager and Chief Instructor. And uh, we've got some exciting news for you. Um, we're uh, Fairwind says we work some kicks out, so this is our first time going to Facebook Live to make an announcement like this. So if we happen to get disconnected or anything, uh, we'll be going live uh, again right afterwards. Um, so, so stay tuned for that. And as you're tuning in, feel free to ask questions and uh, let's keep the conversation going. But uh, this is kind of exciting for us because it's the first time that we've um, gotten our, our, our new announcements for 2017, our new track schedules, uh, all of that live so early in the year. So we're trying to really give everybody the opportunity to you know, book their experience, get the best possible times and cars that they really want, and, uh, and, and also for those gift givers out there to, to start getting those gifts lined up for the holidays. So um, with that said, the point of this Facebook Live session today is number one, we're gonna talk about the new locations we're going to, uh, and then we're gonna actually talk about some of the cars that are not gonna be joining us in 2017. And then we're going to tell you about the new cars that are joining our fleet, both in New Orleans and on our tour in, uh, in 2017. So if we want to, we're going to kind of go through this as a slideshow. So if you want to go to the next slide here, um, just a quick recap of uh, 2017, a few exciting things. So first and foremost, we, uh, uh, we launched a permanent location at New Orleans. So if you didn't know that, uh, or if you haven't had a chance to check it out, we are currently running year-round in New Orleans at NOLA Motorsports Park. It's uh, an amazing racetrack. We've got a 3,200-foot-long straightaway there, uh, full-time staff. We've got the supercar garage. You can come hang out. Uh, we've got our own staff down there full-time. So uh, if you're in New Orleans or you feel like making a trip, it's the fastest supercar experience in America right now. So um, Cal, your top speed, I love always here. You've gone how fast at NOLA? Uh, just a little over 170. Yeah. So we have no speed limits at NOLA Motorsports Park. You can actually come out and go well over, I mean, even as a novice, you could break 150, 160 miles an hour if you're, if you're doing it right. So, um, so that's a big, big piece of news for us. Um, we brought some of our favorite exotic cars back. We reintroduced the Ferrari F430. Um, what else did we do? We, uh, we brought the McLaren back. We gave the 570S a shot after going through multiple MP4s in previous years. Um, but uh, that one, uh, is probably not a surprise to many people. That one's not gonna make the cut again for 2017. We'll explain why in a minute. Um, we spend some time on the track with all sorts of uh, familiar faces and, and, and introduce ourselves to some new YouTubers. If you haven't seen the content, we got Engineering Explained, uh, Vehicle Virgins, Dr. M3, you know, some of the more popular guys on YouTube. So big shout out to those guys for joining us at the track in 2017. Um, and a bunch of other cool media hits. Uh, there's too many to list, so thanks to everybody who came out and joined us at the track in 2017 and, and featured us on their websites or videos or blogs. Um, and of course, thanks to all our customers who joined us in 2017, or I mean, I'm sorry, 2016. Um, it's, it's been an epic year. It's been a long year. We've gotten a lot accomplished. Uh, but moving on to the next slide. So where are we gonna go next? I'm sure some of you have started to piece it together, um, but next slide. So this is what our map looks like for 2017. Uh, we've got a nice outlier over here. We're heading to Seattle for the first time, all the way up to the Pacific Northwest. Um, that might be hard to see on camera, but if you do head to xxspeed.com right now or after this live, you can start to uh, click through and, and see the map on our website. So we've got 23 events scheduled, um, potentially gonna be adding more to that, but for right now we're launching with 23 events. Uh, we're uh, going to really be investing more into our NOLA Motorsports Park facility, so our offerings there, um, especially our Supercar Academy. We kind of soft launched it this year, but in, in case you didn't know, Cal, do you want to talk a little bit about Supercar Academy? Sure. Uh, our Supercar Academy down at NOLA Motorsports Park is a very unique experience. Uh, it gives you a chance to see all the supercars we have to offer down there in a very unique format. You're gonna have one-on-one -on -one instruction with the same instructor through each car. And what you wanna really do down there with the Supercar Academy is, uh, is use it as a stepping stone to further your education in track driving and become a little bit better uh, all-around driver. We focus 
on a lot of different driving techniques, um, as well as just the, the overall car experience. And you get a, over an hour of track time in the exotic cars, and also a skid pad exercise where you're working on weight transfer and, and vehicle dynamics, that type of thing. So it's kind of like elements of a high performance driving education, a driver's education experience mixed with supercars and the experience that you know from Extreme. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure to check that out. Uh, we also run our sprint circuit, which is the most accessible supercar experience in America too. Starting at 99 bucks, you can go drive around on our um, on our purpose-built sprint circuit. And then we also have the your your, uh, uh, your supercar track experience, which actually is four laps down at NOLA. So that's really exciting. So uh, as far as some new markets here, we've got Seattle, Green Bay, and if you could guess Green Bay, that's gonna be Road America. That's just the biggest city towards Road America. We're really excited to finally hit Road America. Um, that's a big deal for us. We've Everyone's been asking for it, and uh, we're really pumped to be able to deliver that racetrack to you. One of the best racetracks in America, one of the most famous ones in the world, so really excited about that. Uh, we're headed to Indianapolis at Putnam Park Motorsports Park, uh, it's, or Putnam Park Road Course, somewhere where we went two or three years ago and haven't been back to, but we're really excited to go back to Indianapolis. Big car community there, obviously. Um, we're heading to Palm Beach. So the tour for the first time is gonna be going to Florida. Uh, again, a lot of people ask us when you come into Florida. Well, here's your answer. We're going to Palm Beach twice in 2017, um, as early as February. So if you wanna get out to the track, it's the, I think it's the weekend of Valentine's Day. Uh, so definitely gonna be a cool gift if you wanna hit up uh, Palm Beach. And uh, I guess that's it for new markets. Um, we also have the Atlanta Motor Speedway, uh, my yep. home, home place, uh, city of Atlanta. We've always gone to Atlanta Motor Sports Park, uh, which is just north of the city. Uh, we'll be visiting just south of the city now, uh, down Atlanta Motor Speedway, get a chance to get out on some of the banking and uh, really see a, a big, big track down there. Yeah, well, and to clarify, we'll be at both tracks in Atlanta next year. We're going to be hitting Atlanta Motor Sports Park. My personal favorite track with all the elevation changes and the technicality, and then the speedway as well. So hit north and south, totally different race tracks. So you know, again, our our mission is to make experiences accessible to everybody, and by doing this, I think we're really opening it up to a whole nother range of, of experience. Um, let's see, are there any other new tracks? Not that I, I think that's it. Um, so with that being said, uh, again, check out xxspeed.com for the updated calendar and map and everything like that. You'll be able to find an event near you. Um, we're also got some really exciting new website updates coming in a couple of weeks where it'll make it really easy for you to find the closest experience to you uh, and, and, and make it much easier to book your experiences as well. So um, stop on by the website for more information on, on where we're going to be. That brings us to the fleet. So this is where you guys can start to chime in. And also, if you do have questions about the tracks, you know, Cal being our chief instructor, at, towards the end here, we can answer questions. He, uh, he writes a lot of the stuff that goes up on our blog as far as driver's guides to different racetracks. Uh, we really do everything we can to prepare you. Uh, whether it's our first time at the racetrack or your first time at the track, we're gonna have the info that you need to go out and experience it um, in the supercar as best as you can. So, Rich, you wanna take us to the next slide? All right, so as I said, a few cars didn't make the cut uh, in, in, for 2017. And again, that's, this is because we're trying to make more cars accessible to you, uh, our, our drivers. Um, and you know, we, we currently roll with three semis deep to our racetracks and we can only fit so many cars. So in order to make room for the newest, latest and greatest, we're gonna say goodbye to a couple of our favorites. So the first one, um, unfortunately, is gonna be some, some you know, sour news to some people because I know our GTR fans love the GTR. Uh, that car is no longer going to be on the tour for us. Um, as, said, as it says here, it's, it's embarrassing enough Ferraris for now. Uh, I, I think if you want to touch on this, I mean, the GTR was, when it came out in 2009, was like absolutely top of the line supercar status. Absolutely. And now the, the, the cars that it was competing with have moved on to a whole nother level. I agree. I think you can see some age in the GTR. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not a thrilling experience. Um, but just with the way that technology is advancing so quickly, you know, we've got to make room for bigger and better things. And I don't think it'll be the last time we see the GTR in Extreme Fleet, but at least for right now, I think there's some other newer, um, more advanced cars that I think we really want to open up the doors to, not only to ourselves, but to all our uh, drivers and our customers out there. So that's definitely something I look forward to. Um, besides the GTR, I know the 430 is also one of those cars that we're, we're going to be transitioning out of. 
Um, it had a great run. I think it was you know one of the cars from day one that day one. had extreme head, um, whether it was a Scuderia or a Spider or whatever it was. But there was always a place for the 430 in our fleet. Um, I liked it as a tech because it was one of the less technical cars um, because there weren't a whole lot of gadgets and, and modules that you see with a lot of the newer cars that we currently have in the fleet. But just something pure about that car that I know that we're all going to miss. But I mean, we're making room for a bigger and better uh, Ferrari, so that's still to come. Um, I guess the last thing on the list here that it shouldn't be a, a surprise to a lot of our, our drivers out there is that the McLaren is no longer going to be um, sticking around. Um, we've just been plagued with a lot of technical issues with the car. Um, not to say that the car doesn't run great when it does run great, but that's the key word. It needs to be running great for it to really give us to give you guys that, that thrilling extreme experience that you all come and pay for. So it, it's with a sad heart that we, we are moving on from it, but you never know what the future holds. So Yeah, just to touch on the McLaren too, I mean, I know a lot of people this year, we had to move people around because, you know, the McLaren would, would run for one event and then it wouldn't for the next, or it'd make it even, you know, a, a half a day into one event, and then it would have some sort of error that would shut it down. So uh, we really apologize to anybody that was inconvenienced by that, but that's why the car is not making the cut. Again, like you said, when it drives great, that car is epic, it's amazing. It's just not reliable enough for us to give you the best experience possible. So that's that's really the, the bar none reason. Uh, but, you know, maybe if they address those issues again, we'll give it another shot down the road, but uh, it's just kind of always seems to be an issue. Um, any points on, on saying goodbye to Andy's cars? Uh, well, the 430, as, as you touched on, has been there since the beginning. It was actually the very first car I ever drove with Extreme Experience. Um, I think I've got more seat time in a 430 than just about any other car in our fleet. Um, but exactly as, as you guys have said, it's, you know, while it's one of the greatest of its time period, um, you know, time goes on and, and we're ready we're ready to actually move on to a better, better Ferrari. Yep, I agree 100%. I love the 432. It's one of the first supercars I ever drove on a racetrack. Love the GTR. I mean, we could we could rave about those cars all day, but we got some new stuff coming. So if you've seen this, uh, maybe on social media, we've been teasing this along. Um, if you haven't guessed yet, we've, we've put a few hints up on our Facebook page, uh, but we will be introducing not three, but actually four new cars for 2017. And so with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, to the next interesting slide. We do have some guesses so far. We have GT350, Z06. We were told we should get a fleet of Lambos or just Ferraris. What do you guys think about that? Well, we had the Z06 at one point. Yeah, we actually started with the Stingray when it first came out, then progressed to the Z06. From a tech standpoint, the Z06 was, wasn't exactly track ready. I don't think we had a some growing pains with that car, but overheating, um, with, the overheating with the superchargers. So, so moving, moving forward, I think some of those problems will be alleviated, as you guys will see. Yep. All right, let's let's get this next slide going. Uh, you can keep the guesses coming as we go, though. So here's a few hints. So in the past, uh, this supercar was in our fleet as a V8. Um, it has an Italian cousin currently. And it's received a complete restyle, which we think is extremely aggressive and, and really, really on point for what this car is. So I'm sure you can start guessing by now. Uh, Rich, anybody, anybody nailing it yet? Yeah, Toyota Camry. Toyota Camry. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> as, as long as it's the Camry S. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, Camry S. Yes. The one we car. see in, in Monaco yeah, on the car. circuit. Same one, actually. Hybrid. All right, we got some... R8 guesses, uh, we had a previous guess of a Grand Sport, another R8, so here we are. Dun, 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 dun. 2017 Audi R8. We are really pumped about this car. Um, this car is currently coming, um, you know, the base level at 540 horse, uh, 40 horsepower, the 0 to 60 times around 3 seconds, that's significantly faster than the past. Um, so this is basically a Lamborghini Huracan that's been reskinned. Um, it's uh, stylistically, we, we had the opportunity to go see one at the car show before it was before it was out. We were all really geeking out over it, um, and we all love the Huracan. Uh, from all the reviews we've read, the all-wheel drive feels better on this car, um, and potentially even the steering. I don't know if it's actually any different, but um, any feedback on, on as a as a driver? Um, I, I have not personally driven the car yet, but I've talked to a lot of the instructors, and quite a few of them have been in the car. 
Uh, it's, it's feedback has been something that makes me really want to get out there and drive this car myself. The original Aria we had, the V8, was my favorite car we've ever had. We had one with a stasis exhaust. It was like perfectly balanced. The all-wheel drive wasn't invasive. It didn't understeer. I mean, it was an amazing car. That, and that's kind of what I'm hoping this new one will be. It's gonna, you know, you can see it doesn't have as much horsepower as the Huracan, but I think that kind of will give the overall experience a little bit more um, for the driver because you're not really fighting all this power. There's more of a connection to the car, uh, like Joe alluded to, the, the original R8 we had with the V8. I mean, that car was just a blast drive, and it was probably one of the slowest cars we really had in a straight line. So it's not all about the straight line performance, and I think this car will fit perfectly into the, the fleet that we've got going for 2017. Yeah. The original, the, the V8 was definitely one of the best, best R8s. Um, they tried to just up the power and put that V10, but it did. It threw off a little bit of the balance of the car. Um, upset the handling a little bit while it was faster down the straightaways uh, It did lose a little bit of what we loved about the R8 and yep. um, From everything that I've heard this reinstills that yeah So for all of you Audi fans, you're gonna have an Audi back in the fleet We had a ton a ton of requests for the Audi over the last 12 months um, You know it was a tough decision to take it away for 2016, but uh, so now it's back Hopefully you Audi fans can now uh, sleep easy GTR fans take a hint, hint, maybe next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. All right, let's check out the next one. A few, uh, a few little hints here. So uh, this bare bones car is built for the track. It's all natural V8, brings the fight to Europe's front door, and it pays homage to a 1963 classic. So if you haven't been able to guess yet, um, you know, are this, yeah, you can you can start guessing. I think I've heard it come up already. I think we've got it. Yeah. Um, we're really pumped about this car. The uh, Corvette Grand Sport is going to be joining us in 2017. Uh, it just was. They just started doing the press uh, for this car. I think in October. So there's not a ton of content on this. But if you do some googling, you'll find some really great video reviews. Um, everyone's raving about this car. And in fact, the the big press event was at Atlanta Motorsports Park where where a lot of our guys are, it's their home track and they had a really good time ripping that thing around the course. But, you know, for those of you that don't know, this is kind of like the American version of the Porsche GT3. This is like the track lightened, you know, uh, performance pure. version, pure version of the Corvette. So, I mean, we have a lot of American muscle fans out there. We've always, always heard from you that you'd like to see the Corvette back in the fleet. And as Ted alluded to, we had the, one of the first Stingrays in America. We pre-ordered it. We, you know, paid over MSRP back in 2014 when the C7 came out um, and offered that to you. And then when the Z06 came out, we offered it, ran it for about a year, and did have continuous issues with that due to the, the supercharger and transmission heat overheating issues and stuff like that. But this car, we're really hoping um, from everything that that Chevy has, you know, on their website, from all the reviews we've read, uh, that this is going to solve all those problems. So. Uh, any anything you guys want to add? There? I mean, like like Joe said, I mean, we put these cars through the paces. So if there's a, a chink in the armor somewhere, extreme experience experience is going to find it. So yeah. I think the biggest thing that they could have done from the Z06 to the Grand Sport is actually pulling that supercharger off, give it a little bit more cooling ability. Um, so I'm really psyched to drive this car. Yeah, it's it, for those of you again that don't know, um, we'll be. This is now published on the website, so you, you can check out the specs. But it's basically the Corvette Z06 minus the supercharger. So it's got the upgraded suspension, brakes, uh, it's lighter, Aero. you know, okay. it's got a lot of aerodynamics to it. So, uh, you know, it's basically a Z06 minus a couple, you know, what, 100 and something horsepower. But uh, Nice guess, Ryan, you nailed it. Cool. Thanks for everybody who's, who's been guessing. And Cal, your sweater is getting a lot of positive feedback as well. <laughs> a lot of feedback. Well, shout out to Lester for the, the hint on that. <laughs> he loves the sweater. All right, on to the next car. Thank you, Helen. All right, so, so <laughs> this one, this one is exciting. So um, I'm sure a lot of people have kind of started to catch the hint on this one too. But um, so the future of supercar technology and the first of its kind in the Extreme Experience fleet. Uh, it's been 10 years in the making. A lot of people have been really excited for this thing to hit the market. A lot of kids grew up with this uh, poster of this car on their wall. And it's Godzilla's newest enemy. So with that said, um, I'm sure the guesses will start trickling in here. They are. 
think you guys got this one. All right. All right. The Acura NSX. We are pumped for this car. This will be our first hybrid added to the fleet. Uh, you know, this, the hybrid technology of the Acura is, is kind of the highlight of a lot of the reviews because it's not really, the hybrid technology is not meant to improve fuel efficiency on this car really. It's, it's meant for track use, it's meant for, for torque filling the, the, the turbo uh, V8, right? V6. The, the turbo V6. Um, and so everything we've read about this car is it's a handling monster. Um, and of course, if you've seen anything online recently, um, it's been beating Lamborghinis in zero to 60 runs and uh, just is a really exciting car. So the, the NSX, just like the 430 was the first car I was on track with, with Extreme, the NSX, the original one, uh, was the first car I was ever on track in in my life. Wow. And I rode with my dad in his NSX. Um, so the NSX has a very, very, very uh, special place for me and I'm really excited for this car. Um, not to mention, this is, and I think we talked about it in one of the XXTV episodes, the future of where supercar technology is going. And you look at the, you know, top of the line Ferraris and McLarens and stuff like that, and the Porsches, and they've got this hybrid technology. This is the first one to really come through that's, you know, not the million plus price point. This is the affordable version of it. Um, and so this, this is something I'm really, really excited about. Back when the NSX first came out, they said, we're gonna take what you guys are doing that is you know, way, way, way out there and we're gonna make it affordable and reliable. And they're doing the same thing with, um, you know, against the P1 and against the uh, LaFerrari. They're taking that technology, making it affordable, hopefully reliable, we'll see. As Ted says, we, we will definitely find if there's anything um, that's not working right. Yeah, I mean, we all wish we could have a 918 or a P1 or a LaFerrari, but I mean, this is this is that underdog again we're talking about, like the GTR, which when it first came out, it was a question mark, you know, and then it's held the test of time, and it just, it, it's, it's an amazing car, but the Acura is not a name that usually excites so many people, unless you're a purist, like like we all are, um, so I'm, I'm very curious to see exactly how all the advanced technology does hold up, because that, you know, like we, we talked about with the McLaren, a lot of these, these really advanced systems on the car can almost be a burden to them. But with the amount of R&D that Acura's actually put into the car, I think that they're on the right track to really give us and you guys a great thrilling experience. Yeah, you know, when you, you compare this to the GTR, um, it, it definitely has more curb appeal. Ooh. And, oh, somebody <laughs> skipped it. That's <laughs> um, there. Um, down, but the down Acura definitely will, looks more like a supercar compared to the GTR. It's kind of filling that slot for all the JDM fans, even though this car is actually made in America, but as a Japanese brand. Um, so, and if you didn't know that, check it out. It's pretty cool. This this factory is here in the United States, and so it's it's a it's an American supercar essentially. Um, we're in Japanese skin. The, la the last thing that I'm really excited about with this is with that hybrid technology. Most people that have ever driven a turbo vehicle on the track know that you get a little bit of that turbo lag with a vehicle. Um, the, the whole purpose of that hybrid system is to you know, make up for it in those times where the turbo isn't spooled all the way and really help deliver that peak power. So I'm hoping it's gonna feel more like a naturally aspirated car even though it is a turbo hybrid. Um, so the, the pedal feel and things like that are gonna be really interesting to It's to got see. two more gears than any other car we've ever had as well. Nine so speed. It's a nine speed, which is really interesting. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of it has to do with the combination with the, the electric motors that the car has and, and the gearing that it's set up for. Cool. We can come back and touch on this, but let's let's keep it moving to the next car. If you were paying attention, you might have already seen it. But So it's a successor to a legend. Um, looks good dressed in red. And uh, it's a reintroduction. Wait, what do we got here? Reintroduction to force induction. <laughs> That's forced. a mouthful. Forced induction. Um, it's the Ferrari 488 GTB. Uh, we are super pumped to have a, a turbo Ferrari in our fleet. I mean, this is like the pinnacle of Ferrari right now, I mean, beyond the, the uh, La Ferrari, but uh, this has been a long time coming. We've had a lot of people asking for this car. Uh, you know, the 458 is one of my personal favorites. Epic race car, or you know, supercar on, on the racetrack. It's got a very race car feel to it. Um, and so we cannot wait to get our hands on, on this car. Uh, any feedback from your guys' perspectives before we keep talking about it? I'm, I'm still overwhelmed by the car. I know when it first came out, 
it was one of those cars that we all thought would, was pretty unattainable, you know, almost La Ferrari esque. But you know, the four five eights are are like, you know, they're not they're showing their age a little bit. So it was nice that Ferrari was able to to kind of put some extra life into the car by like turbocharging it. Um, so I, it's gonna be really really thrilling of a car to drive. So. I this hope to see everybody out in this thing. I just realized this will be the highest horsepower car in the fleet. Yeah, so, so the Huracan's gonna be knocked down a yeah. peg. Yeah, because the um, the the Z06 was 650, correct? Yeah. yeah. So it's gonna be the the most horsepower out of any car ever uh, that we've had in the fleet. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So 063 seconds, seven speed DCT. Um, I know this thing's gonna be have, have some upgrades over the 458's already perfect transmission. I mean that thing, when it's uh, you know when you're banging through the gears in the racetrack, is flawless. But you've got an automatic; it reads your mind. You know when you're in the braking zone, it just perfectly downshifts. Um, so the next generation, I can't imagine how good it's going to be with this car. And you know going along with what Ted was saying, like our mission has always been to make exotic cars accessible to everybody, uh, and this is one of those cars that definitely is like top top tier. You know almost unaccessible for most people, you know, our goal is to prove that you don't need to be a millionaire to enjoy an exotic car. And this is the, the, the pinnacle uh, of that uh, mission. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this 488. Um, that's all I have to say about it. I can't wait to drive it. I mean, I, it's a familiar car too. I mean, you look at the interior, there are some changes there, but overall the feel is still 458 Italia. So if anybody has already driven the Italia, you're not gonna get the same experience driving this car. It's gonna feel comfortable to you, so you're gonna enjoy it a little bit more, I think, but this is gonna be a car that's gonna take that experience you had beyond the next level. Is that um, almost 100 horsepower more, right? What's the, four, yeah. what's the 458 yeah. at? Yeah, about 100 yeah. horse. 560-ish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so 100 more horsepower in a similar style Ferrari with upgraded suspension, transmission, and everything else. I mean, that's... And I'm a turbo guy by heart, and uh, there's nothing like the feeling of that turbo spooling up and kicking you in the back you know and sending you on your way so um maybe we'll upgrade turbos who knows <laughs> <laughs> slaps him. super down Ted. he likes a good project the um, there's a line that i'm actually going to steal from one of our instructors he always said uh when someone asked him he, he actually works for ferrari um what's your favorite ferrari his answer is always the next one and we now have the next one and it's now here so if your favorite car was the ferrari before just wait till you try the next one Sweet. All right, so that's it for the fleet. Um, we've got a few last points. We're going to be offering a discount here. So for the first uh, for the first hundred reservations of 2017, starting right now, we're offering 20% off using the promo code 2017 Live. So we're going to be posting this. Um, if it's not already on Facebook, we'll be sharing it um, after the show. It's going to be on our website. Uh, but you can right now the first 100 spots only. These are going to go fast. We do over 20,000 pre-book drives a year. Uh, so this is gonna go like that. So for anybody who's tuning in right now, um, we're gonna send out an email after this too to make sure that you don't miss it out. But if you're watching right now, you're the first people to be able to access these cars, your optimal times with 20% off. And 20% off of a 488 right now is like over 100, well over $100 when you add track insurance. The discount applies to photo, video packages, all that type of stuff, which actually, that's a fun little point for 2017. Our media package, when you purchase video, is gonna offer, it's what, it's three videos, right? Or unlimited. unlimited. Yeah, it's unlimited videos when you purchase our new uh, video package. And uh, that's, that's again based on people's feedback. We're trying to make it as easy for you to, you know, document your experience and take your memories home. So you can, you can you know, fill your card up and save 20% off of it right now for the first 100 bookings. Um, and again, the code is 2017 live. 2017 live. Uh, be sure to use that. Go to xxspeed.com and put that in the promo code section to book your 2017 experience. So, uh, with that said, you know, we're, right now we're kicking off the holiday season here in the office. We are all like, we've been working feverishly to get this calendar live, get contracts signed, you know, get the website updated, uh, everything of that nature. And now you're going to start seeing some cool stuff from us coming for the holidays, um, you know, new, new offerings. And uh, like I mentioned, we're improving some, some different parts of the experience. So keep an eye out for all that stuff. If you haven't yet done so, subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll be the first people to know about all these new things that are coming, including any sort of promotions or discounts or 
um, or early access. We've got something really cool coming for our VIP customers. So uh, be sure to subscribe. Go to xxv.com and you can uh, subscribe from there. But uh, now is the time if you guys have any questions that we'd like to start answering them. So I'm going to pull up in my Facebook Live. And uh, Rich, is there anything that's come up? The first thing I want you to address is uh, people are already trying to book and it's giving them an error code. So we just went to go work on it. Don't fret. We'll check it out and get, we'll post a solution shortly. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it sounds like maybe the website uh, booking system is being overloaded. So uh, that's good typically, thing. Yeah, good that's thing. typically when that happens. So if you're having a problem booking right now, please check back in a few minutes. Uh, when we get big floods to the website, uh, sometimes the booking system can get bogged down. So uh, actually, we, we usually dial up the bandwidth for the holidays, and we are planning on doing that. Wasn't planning on doing it for this episode. So our apologies for any technical issues you might be having right now. Yeah, and they're still adding, they're adding the tracks through the morning, guys, so if there's just a few kinks, we'll have it uh, sorted out really quickly here. So, um, I know we had a few questions show up a little bit earlier, if you guys are interested in answering those. Um, somebody asked about reliability of cars in the fleet, are there any two that stand out in, um, in your mind? I guess maybe we'll kick this over to for Ted. Yeah, reliability. Um... The GTR, I'll just start with that one since that one is leaving the fleet, was probably the most reliable car that we've had to date. Um, and that's not to say it didn't have issues, but when it did have an issue, it was usually something small that we could you know, uh, attend to and fix either at track or shortly thereafter. Um, we had great support from our local dealerships that really helped us out if there was an issue that you know they would cover under warranty, whether it was a, a seat or a windshield or transmission. I mean. We've gotten a lot of support from Nissan, so kudos to them. Um, I'm hoping we're gonna get the same kind of uh, support from Acura with the new NSX. Other than the GTR, the, the Huracan. I mean, this new Lamborghini is something something special. We, we've been running the Gallardos uh, historically for a few years now, and those are starting to show their age kind of like the 430. Um, so there's a little bit more upkeep on those cars, but the, the, or the Huracan, I'm sorry, is just bulletproof. And, and that is something that not only that we can attest to, but the dealerships. I have a great relationship with our local dealerships, and, and they, they're the ones that put it as being bulletproof. So with the new Audi we have rolling in, the previous generation of the R8 was well, mostly bulletproof as well. We had very little issues with that car, so I can only imagine um, you know, the reliability that we're gonna get with the new Audi. I think we did like 35,000 track miles on that R8 before it had like a clutch, it clutch bearing. Just, which a throttle which bearing, is which is insane. Yeah, typical of that car. Uh, we had a, an air conditioning like blow up on us one time, but you know, that doesn't affect your track experience, right? Yeah. Um, I actually just saw a comment I wanted to touch on. So Muhammad asked about the Corvette Grand Sport um, not seeing it at Summit Point. So that car is gonna actually initially start at NOLA Motorsports Park in our fleet down there. And then we're gonna be adding it to experiences throughout the year. So um, if you're not, subscribe to our email yet be sure to sign up for our emails so that when we do add that to the fleet we haven't determined exactly which events that's going to go to yet um, you'll be the first one to know so sorry for the miscommunication on that and he also asked uh, about manuals so i saw that that was a, a question um, as an instructor myself i can tell you that instructing somebody in a car that they are unfamiliar with and a track that they are unfamiliar with um, the fewer variables you have, the better it is. Um, the second part of that is you can't even get a 488 or any of these cars in a stick shift. Uh, most of them only come with the automatic transmission. Now, from my experience, I've driven all of these cars and I've paddle shifted them, I've left them in automatic mode. There is almost zero difference at all between them. Um, and like I said, for the first time you're out on the track, you definitely want to be as comfortable as possible. Have as, you know, as little on your mind. Um, so a stick shift is not always the best. Uh, the last part of that, is, and I know you said, would we be going through clutches? Um, I know that, Joe, you went and did one of the NASCAR experiences. They have a stick shift there. Yeah. Um, I've talked to some instructors who have done it. Mainly they just have people that stall out and it takes them a long time to get going. But anything on that? Yeah, no, I actually when I was sitting there waiting to go out on the track in, in the NASCAR experience, I had two different cars stall in front of me and then they have to come and you know get the thing fired back up and then they give you a push start and everything. So yeah, when you're going 150 miles an hour down a straightaway and it's time to stand on the brakes and downshift it, 
almost no one knows how to do that unless you are an actual track junkie and you're out there lapping your own car manual on a racetrack all day. It is, uh, it is overwhelming. I, I personally can drive a manual on the street. I've driven manual on track like three or four times just to give it a shot and it's, it's confusing, believe me. So, um, and I, you know, I've done Still hundreds and hundreds of laps in cars around the racetracks. So it's, uh, yeah, heel towing and all that dance. That's why we don't offer manuals. So as soon as Dodge offers a dual clutch Viper, maybe, you know, that'd be something we'd love to see. Um, you know, one thing guys about the, uh, the promo code we have here, the 2017 Live right now, I think is only active on our tour. So if you guys are trying to use that code for a New Orleans booking, um, might be better off just giving us a call. We've got uh, plenty of people that can answer and help you guys out book that reservation with that promo code. Um, so that might be some of the technical difficulties we're seeing. Um, again, just reach out to us. We've got plenty of people here that we'd love to, uh, to work that out for you guys. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Another point too is some of the, you might find some glitches. We just got this stuff live right now, so let us know if you find anything that's that's wrong, any typos, any pricing that's wrong, anything you might find. Please let us know. We rely on you as well. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that at NOLA, we are going to be adding the Lamborghini Huracan down there as well in 2017. So currently down there, we've got the LP560-4 Lamborghini, the Ferrari 458, the Porsche GT3, and the Nissan GTR. Um, the GTR will be replaced with the Grand Sport and the uh, 560 will get replaced by the Huracan, so those cars will also be accessible to you in New Orleans. Um, let's see. Hey everybody. <laughs> this uh, is Adam, our CEO. I haven't, uh, am I on, am I on we good? Yeah. I don't know if you're in frame. Yeah. Mine's frame. Oh, my, okay, mine's delayed, all right. If I am in frame, my name's Adam. I don't often come into frame, but I did want to say something that popped into my head and I figured, what the heck? I have 70 people watching that might want to hear this. I'm going to be at SEMA this weekend. If you happen to be at SEMA this weekend, find me, shake my hand, and I'll give you a free driving experience anywhere in the country that you want in 2017. Wow. Nice. Wow. Well. <laughs> but you got to see me. You got to shake my hand. You cannot pass this along digitally or anything like that. Um, but I love nothing more than uh, meeting everybody who drives our cars, who enjoys our experience. Uh, that's how we build this. So come tell me what we can do better. Come tell me what we're doing great. And in return, I'll thank you for, uh, for that with a free driving experience. Once again, my name is Adam. I'll be in Vegas tomorrow, Friday, and I'll be there uh, on Saturday. Otherwise, I'll see you on tour in 2017. Nice. Hell yeah. So there you have it. Uh, we, we like to go off the script here. So uh, you can find us at SEMA. If you're there, tweet us or, or whatever. I'll be on social media. We'll all be kind of... Um, milling around on that. Actually, I just saw a question. Um, Jay asked about other cars at NOLA. We will also be rotating some of our tour cars down to New Orleans as well. So, you know, at various times, you'll get the NSX down there, you'll, you'll get the uh, 488, whatever that may be. So, again, that's one of those things that we haven't determined yet, but we'll be making announcements about. So, if you haven't done so, subscribe on our website. You'll hear me say it a hundred times. That's the number one place where you get the insider info. It goes live as soon as. Uh, you know, you'll get an email as soon as uh, updates go live. Uh, Lester says, Adam is the man. <laughs> uh, let's see, ever thought about the Mercedes GT? Yeah, we've, we definitely considered it. We used to have the SLS, love that car. Um, they begin appreciating in value, actually. Uh, but so that might be something that you see in the future for sure. Um, the AMG GT, uh, but not, not currently. He asked about the Aventador. We have offered it in the past. Um, it, it may make an appearance again, but the problem with a car like that is that we have to charge you as the customer a, a much higher price tag than most people are willing to pay for that. I mean, we're talking about a four hundred plus thousand dollar car. You know, maintenance, everything on that car, the tires alone, all that type of stuff, cost on a whole other kind of lead um, than like the LP five sixty or Huracan. So uh, we have to pass it on to you. And when we offered it, it just didn't really resonate very well with the majority of our customers. So I personally like the Huracan better. Um, yeah, it is much better. After driving both of them, it's just so big and heavy. Yes, you got that power down the straightaway, but the extra little bit of power, you don't notice that much over the Urukan, um, especially most of the tracks that we go to. Um, you know, even down at NOLA with that really long straightaway, you're not gonna feel that difference too much other than through the turns where you feel the extra weight. Cool. Um, Actually, so we've got, let's say, Ron Glick has a comment that's, uh, he's really not happy with the changes, so 
Ron, really sorry to hear that. Um, again, we're, our mission is to make cars accessible. Uh, Supercar is accessible. It's been the day, uh, the goal from day one. We're not trying to price anybody out here. We just, you know, we're adding a million dollars of cars to the fleet essentially. So, um, and these are all really expensive cars. We're paying over MSRP for some of them. So, you know, your point on the pricing, I'm, I'm sorry that it's out of your range, but I mean, that's, that's, you're, we're offering two, three, four hundred thousand dollar cars. So it has to reflect that. And then your point about the media package, um, actually we, you know, the video is unlimited now. So for $10 more, you're actually getting unlimited video and you're getting photo with it. So it's, it really is actually a better value. So just, uh, you know, I'm sorry it's not for everybody, but, but uh, that, that will happen. Let's see, we got any suggestion on what he wanted to see or? No, he just said that uh, he's done it eight times now. So, but he won't be doing it again if these things stay the same. So, uh, Ron, I don't know what to tell you. I'm really sorry to hear that, man. We really Brad appreciate your business, but uh, you know, we're offering 20% off right now with the code 2017 live. So that will save you hundreds of dollars. And then also if you subscribe to our emails, you know, we'll be doing more discounts throughout the year. So um, hopefully that makes it more accessible for you. Um, Ryan Keynes, what are the new cars? I just missed it. Uh, we've got the 488 GTB, the, uh, the 2017 Audi R8, the Acura NSX, the Corvette Grand Sport are gonna be the new additions to the fleet. I also saw they asked about the Cayman GT4. Um, I personally really like the Cayman, but as far as keeping up with the rest of the fleet, um, it would be one of the harder cars to drive at the speeds that the rest of the cars are able to go to Again, easily. You got a rope to the Yeah, and until they get that PDK, which I, I think there was a, a, a package that was coming out this year um, that had the PDK, but until then, um, it's, it's really tough. But the GT4 is definitely another great track car. It's something that we mentioned. Um, and then I know that there was a lot of cars that we thought about. It, it was not an easy decision when you look at everything, but um, you know, I personally like the Lotus. We had the Lotus for an event, um, but it's just it's the same thing as like the, the Cayman. It's a little underpowered compared to the rest of the fleet. When you've got a 48 out there with over 600 horsepower, it's really hard to keep up with that. It's something that's designed to be light and nimble, uh, not as much power and um, brute force. We actually got a lot of questions about what happens to our cars when we're done with them in the fleet. Um, the, the, the answer is that we all just take them home. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, we, uh, we buy and sell a lot of cars. So uh, they'll go back on the market, you know, we'll recondition them, get them back up to, you know, make sure the paint's perfect, the brakes are perfect, the cars are fully reconditioned, and, and then we will sell them, you know, back on the market. Uh, we clear bra the cars, we maintain them meticulously, that's Ted's job. So, you know, the cars are actually very well maintained during the track use, better than some street cars actually, you know, when you think about how, how people drive them on the streets and mess with the transmissions and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, they go back on the market. Let's see here, any other questions? Let's see, a lot more questions about, uh, you know, Ventador SV, that type of stuff. I, I wish, again, we're, we're going up towards a million dollars for that car. Um, the, somebody asked about the GT3 RS. Um, it's another pretty good car. Um, however, I know that there's been a lot of spied shots of a mid-engine Porsche coming out. So we may end up, you know, in, a, in a couple of years, releasing that as something. Um, but I would say this, that most drivers wouldn't know no, pick up on the difference between a GT3 and a GT3 RS. That I mean, an RS is like, to even push a Porsche to the limit, drive a GT3 on a racetrack, is, that's, that's one thing. And then to go to the GT3 RS, which is, you know, more powerful, light, and all the different things. I mean, most people would never feel the difference in that car. So if you're a big Porsche fan, you'll absolutely love a GT3. It's my favorite car to drive on the racetrack. It's actually almost all of our favorites to actually get behind the wheel of and drive. But, uh, so, I wouldn't rule it out, but you'll enjoy the GT3, for sure. Um, a couple other questions just to address. If the promo code's not working for you or anything's not working, please let us know, but we're working through some kinks right now. The site was just overloaded, so um, uh, either just bear with us for a few minutes as we sell the first 100 discounted tickets. Uh, you can always call us. The, web, the phone number's on our website. Um, if, on our, if you're on mobile, you just tap call, it will call us. Uh, but the number is 866-273-7727. And we have people standing by right now, uh, you know, every day, real people in our office right here in Chicago who are answering the phone, 
the phones for you uh, and will help you book your reservation or get the gift card that you're looking for or anything like that. Um, so real quick, I saw um, Chris Evans. Uh, I see that you posted on there paddle shifting. It is something that we allow uh, paddle shifting to be done. Um, we do discourage it um, just because of how, how in-depth it is for most people. Um, so we do... We just got the thumbs up that the code's working. Oh, the code's working. Okay, the code, the code uh, should be working for all, uh, for all experiences now, everybody. So, but the, um, the paddle shifting is allowed, especially for people who can show that they do it. We, as instructors, like to see that someone is competent with the track, the car, before having them paddle shift. Um, but it is something that's totally doable. If you would like to do it, then, you know, of course, ask your instructor in the car. They'll explain, you know, up and down. It's pretty simple. Um, but if you're out there and you have a difficult time, most of the cars, once you put them into the manual mode, they stay in the manual mode. Um, and it's not real, real easy to get them out and back into the automatic. So if it becomes overwhelming for somebody, uh, it's, it's not the easiest switch to go back. Yeah, I mean, what happens is you'll shift and, you know, you're going up to your gears and you're really excited. You get to fifth gear, let's say, or even sixth gear. Then it's time to get on the brakes, go into a hairpin turn, and now your car's in fifth gear when it should be in second. And you're trying to pull out of the corner and it's like really slow and bogged down. You don't know what to understand. You, know, you don't know what's happening. You get flustered. You grab. You turn the windshield wipers on instead of the paddle. Now your, your whole flow is, like, disrupted. And it just really messes with your experience. So you've got to really, really, really know what you're doing. It's not R1 or an L1 on a, on a gaming pad. It's way more complex than somebody might think. But Chris, um, if you want to come out and you want to paddle shift one of the cars, let me know which car you're going to be in. I'll personally go as an instructor with you. Um, and I'll make sure that you're able to paddle shift. And I'll, I'll walk you through all the steps and uh, explain the course to you. Um, come for a ride beforehand. And I'll go through you know, what gear to be in and which turn. Uh, I'd be happy to work with you. It's something that I enjoy getting people out there that have previous track experience or I'm not sure what your experience was, it just said people that know what they're doing. So um, just let me know. I'd be happy to help you. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is kind of, so uh, our chief instructor from NOLA is in the comments too, Alex Awesome, one of the coolest names ever. Uh, <laughs> so Alexander Awesome, he's in there answering some questions for you right now. Um, you know, we'll jump into the comments too and try to answer questions as anybody um, can uh, if we don't address them here during the show um, let's see Heather said we weren't coming back to Oklahoma yeah this was a decision that we made uh, very recently I mean it's Hallett Motorsports Park Oklahoma um, City slash Tulsa has always been a great market for us um, and we did think we were gonna be heading back there but we did we are we, yeah, we are, we are, I know, so the, we are heading back there. She's saying, she said we weren't gonna go back, so we are coming back to that market in April. Um, in April. So be sure to check us out. We, it's, it's a fun track, and, and folks of Oklahoma are, uh, are really fun, and you know, that's a cool thing about what we do is go around the country and meet people from all these different cities, and that's, that's one of those regions that has just a really, I think, nice, good Midwestern vibe. And then down there. St Steve, um, somebody asked if, uh, what is our personal fleet? Uh, I think probably the, the best one, we'll start with Ted on personal fleet. Personal fleet, um, I've got a 93 Mazda RX-7 that's pretty heavily modified, only because I have to keep up with the rest of the fleet we see here. So when I'm not working on the Ferraris or Lamborghinis, I'm crunching, wrenching away on my FD. So. For all you guys out there, uh, you might have seen it at Autobahn recently. I usually try to bring it out to at least an event or two um, each year. Um, so that, that's my baby. Um, like I said, I'm a turbo guy, so it's got a big old turbo. It's still rotary engine. I know a lot of guys out there like to do the swaps and stuff like that. But um, it's a testament to the just the, the overall soul of the car, I think. Um, which is also why I'm excited for this NSX, because it's a throwback to the 90s era when Japanese sports cars were, were at the top of their game. So, um, I know there's a hint of a Mazda rotary potentially coming back sometime in the future, so maybe that will pop up in our fleet. We never know. Um, you know what? I th the the Supra is I think yeah. the Supra, yeah. So yeah. so that would be an interesting car to see like what the specs come out. But I, I would imagine that car is going to probably be a supercar. It's going to be a Scion. Though. It, it's going to have to be at the level of the NSX, the new GTR that's coming out. Um, you know, so it, I think exciting times are definitely ahead of us. Yeah. Sure.
far as cars, I, I have a GTI, uh, Volkswagen GTI. Recently sold a BMW 335M Sport Coupe. That was a lot of fun. It was slightly tuned. My first car ever was a Jeep SRT8. So um, definitely uh, enthusiasts around the office here. We all, we all have different, some people here are more into luxury cars, some are more into sports cars and tuning. And um, you know, Rich here recently uh, had unfortunately got rid of a, uh, an E46 M3 that he was, uh, that was awesome competition package, but we, uh, we love our cars around here. One of our sales guys just picked up a, a Hawkeye, you know, WRX, so a lot of, a lot of different, um, and Miatas. I was gonna, I, Kyle was gonna jump in and say it. We've got a few Miatas They're here around the office that are- Probably the most common car amongst our instructors is the Mazda Miata. Um, those of you that are not really track focused enthusiasts may look at the Miata as, you know, a chick car or something. Um, I will proudly drive around in a Miata with the top down, with a dude sitting next to me because I know <laughs> it is. It is definitely it is a track car. It's probably the number one car that's tracked in the entire world, um, and it's a great base, you know, for all kinds of driving development. It's a great tool to use. Um, so, you know, with with Ted, he's got the RX sevens. I guess the big brother to it. Um, but the Miata, it's, it's just a great little car. Uh, Mohammed actually owns a, uh, a Miata. He said, check out his profile pic. Yeah, I can see it. NA, right, right, right. NA, yeah. NA, nice. Yeah, uh, yeah the answer is always Miata. So I, I, I almost wore my, my blip shift shirt that um, it's, it's got the, the sun in the background and a little Miata. It's, it's the Lion King saying, it says, ah, uh, so when you are going to buy a Miata? <laughs> Well, we're glad you wore the sweater today. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess, you know, we can keep this conversation going, but again, just to recap for 2017, uh, we're going to a few new tracks. We're going all the way up to Seattle. Uh, we are going down to Florida and Palm Beach. We're adding Atlanta Motor Speedway in Atlanta in addition to AMP. Uh, we are, what am I, oh, we're going to Road America. That's a huge one for us. And then the new cars, we've got the Corvette Grand Sport, the Acura NSX, the Ferrari 488, and the 2017 Audi R8 E10. So we're really excited about that. Um, make sure to check out our website for all, this information is all there on uh, you know, xxspeed.com. And uh, be sure to subscribe to our emails so that you get any other updates when we start moving the fleet around to different tracks and adding different cars. And, and we may add more events too. Um, there's uh, something really exciting we're working on. I'll, I'm not gonna, divulge where, but uh, just, yeah, you'll know first thing on the website. A few questions about Austin. Somebody asked about Coda. Um, we don't run a Coda, but we do run a driveway Austin, which is a, a private racetrack, which is really set up for uh, driver's education and test and tuning race cars. That's a really cool track. Um, Coda is just really expensive to rent, and we'd have to pass that on to our customers and would make it prohibitively expensive for everybody. So we do run private events there, though. So. Um, that makes me, uh, reminds me of one point. Any of you guys out there who would be looking to book a group experience or a corporate experience, whether you want to entertain clients or, uh, just, or a group of friends, make sure to let us know ASAP because as the calendars start to fill up, which is going to start to fill up real fast, um, you know, we do over a quarter of our bookings for 2017 in the next couple of months here. So space fills up really quickly. Um, make sure that you give us a call or submit a contact form on our website immediately because uh, that space will disappear and uh, our sales guys would love to help set you up with everything you need. We can provide Wi-Fi, tents, media space, you know, uh, catering, um, you know, big displays for your presentations. We can handle a lot of that stuff for you, but we need to know as soon as possible so that we can um, make the arrangements for you. We also take our, our experience to tracks that are not on our schedule so if you've got something, you know, you really need to host a huge event elsewhere, uh, you know, we will actually do that for you. We'll white label the whole thing, brand the cars, brand our uniforms, everything like that. So huge range of options, but be sure to reach out to us ASAP for that type of thing. Thank um, you. Yeah. All right, so it, just keep your questions coming. We'll, we'll jump into the comments and answer them. Again, the first 100 bookings for 2017 are offered right now for 20% off your entire purchase. Uh, and that can be done with the code 2017LIVE. So head to xxp.com, use that promo code, and, uh, and save on your experience. Also, one thing I didn't mention, the gift card uh, deal is live right now. So if you wanna buy a gift for somebody else, 
and you don't know what car they might want, grab a gift card on our website. If you buy yourself a $300 gift card, we're gonna give you $75 for yourself. If you buy up to a $1,000 gift card, we're gonna give you $250. So that's basically a free experience if you're wanting to give a, a really epic gift to somebody this year. Um, you know, I, best gift I think you could imagine giving. So uh, make sure to check out our website for those promos as well. Let's see, what's on the map in Texas? Uh, Mark, uh, driveway Austin currently, December. but uh, in, de in December, but stay tuned for some other updates that, that may lead us down there. And also, if you're from Texas, it's a quick little shot over to New Orleans Motorsports Park, which uh, is the fastest supercar experience in America and is an amazing racetrack. And for anybody that wants to go to Mardi Gras, uh, the parade tracker vehicle is going to be one of our Lamborghinis this year. Um, so if you're down there for Mardi Gras, take a look. You'll see one of the Lamborghinis wrapped. Um, I, I saw Alex is posting a bunch of stuff on, on the live feed. Um, Alex, if you want to share some more about that in the feed, um, I'm sure you have a little bit more info on it. Yeah, the car looks awesome. We got it wrapped at PG Nola. They're you know one of the best vinyl wrappers in, uh, in, in America, and they did a killer job on it. It's very New Orleans uh, paint. Uh, vinyl wrap scheme on that Lamborghini. And the parade track wrap, if you go to NOLA, there's always parades going on down there. And the track wrap actually shows you what the different parades are going on. And the Lamborghini will be leading some of those parades, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We're really excited for 2017 and all the new locations and cars it brings. Uh, again, my name's Joe. We got Ted and Cal here. And thanks to everybody behind the camera. And, and we're from Chicago, so. It's go Cubs go. go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> St. Louis. Um, behind the camera, we got Rich, AJ, Alyssa, Mitch, Ryan's back here. We're all going to be jumping in the feed too and answering questions for everybody. So, um, again, thanks for everybody tuning in. Check out xxbeat.com for all the updates. Subscribe to our email newsletter. And we'll see you at a racetrack in 2017. Go Cubs! Go! Woo!